guys, welcome back. My name's Emma and today I want to talk about neuroplasticity and how you can use it to help you heal from dizziness. So neuroplasticity essentially means for the brain to change and rewire itself. So neuro meaning the brain and plasticity meaning plastic or to change. So science of today now suggests that our brains are actually designed to change right up until the day that we die. So if you're looking to change a certain aspect of yourself, then neuroplasticity can help you to do that. Now, it's been proven that the thoughts that we think play a really key part in this because it's been said that if we repeatedly think and do the same things, then this actually changes the physical structures within the brain. So it really has been proven that neuroplasticity can change how the brain operates. So some generic examples of neuroplasticity would be something like learning to ride a bike, it could be learning a new, a new language, or it could be learning to play a musical instrument. So the theory of applying neuroplasticity to heal from dizziness is the same as if you're trying to learn a new skill, it's just a bit more difficult to try to explain. So that's because dizziness is different for all of us. How we would describe it would be similar in some senses, but different in another. And ultimately, what we're feeling and experiencing is true to us and true to what we feel. So essentially, you need to start by writing down what dizziness feels like to you and the sort of thoughts that you have around that and give yourself a clear picture of where you are now. And then I want you to identify what you would like to change. So how do you want to feel? So you identify how you're feeling now and how do you want to feel? And what you actually end up with is a gap between where you are now and where you want to be. And that is where neuroplasticity comes in because that gap is your ability to change and learn, to practice how you want to feel. And in time, you will get there. So I know it sounds quite hard to take by someone saying, you know, you just need to think and feel better and then you'll, you will get there. I know that it's not really as simple as that and I know that you can't just change how you feel. I know that, you know, it's, it's easy to say that. I always remember, you know, my mum saying to me, this was going back when I was really at my worst, at my lowest point, I think I was like complaining to my mum about how bad everything was and I remember she said to me, Emma, just stop thinking about it and, and it will go away. You know, don't worry, don't worry about it, you're focusing on it too much. And that was like probably the worst thing she could have said to me in that time because I just didn't need to hear that and I remember saying to her, like, look, mum, you you don't understand what it's like for me. You wouldn't say that if you were going through what I'm going through. And, you know, I can't just forget about it because it's it's there. It's right in front of everything that I'm trying to do. And, you know, she said to me since then, you know, Emma, I didn't really know what else to say. Like, I, I don't know how you're feeling. I don't know what you want me to say to you. And she's absolutely right. And while at that time I wasn't really ready to consider trying to focus on something else other than where I was I did actually get to a point where I thought you know this isn't really serving me anymore this isn't doing me any favors you know the doctors were telling me that you know to keep busy and keep doing everything I was doing before so that was what I'd done you know I took action with everything that I'd done I still went to work I still played hockey I went to the gym I tried to keep myself active I was cleaning around the house, I was seeing friends, I was going to places to socialise, even when I really didn't feel like it. And I, you know, the doctors were telling me to keep doing as much as I could, so that was what I'd done. And actually, I needed to just give myself a bit of a break and I needed to think about how do I want to feel? Because pushing through was not really doing me any favours and I needed to take a step back and realise that. So eventually I did get there and I thought, you know, it's not working what I'm doing now. Maybe I do need to just accept where I am and accept that for now the dizziness is a part of my life and I need to just work with it rather than fighting against it. And as soon as I let go of the reins, um, that was when I started to improve. You know, I started to learn about neuroplasticity and what it could do for me and I became really open to the idea of maybe I can help myself to get better 
I would seen all these different doctors and you know neurologists and ENTs and I, every time I went I seen someone different and I just felt like I couldn't summarise in 10 minutes of you know the last two years of where I'd been and ultimately no one knows me better than what I know myself and the same applies to you as well. Only you know yourself. Only you know how you feel and only you know how you want to feel and that's really, really important and empowering that it just gives you so much control over the changes you can make to allow yourself to feel better. So it's not really about going from feeling where you are now to just feeling great and on top of the world because it's quite a big jump to make but just try and find ways to feel less negative about where you are. And for me, it was really about uncovering ways to find the relief. So I would suggest that you pick an emotion. You can just pick one for now and decide how you want to feel. And for me, the emotion that I picked was relief because I felt dizzy all the time. I didn't really have any relief. And it was just, I felt like I needed a break. So try that, write down how you want to feel. And then, and then come up with some ways that can allow you to feel more of that. So even though, um, even though our symptoms can be such a big part in our everyday lives, neuroplasticity really isn't about focusing on getting rid of symptoms and it's not about finding a cure. It really is about putting your focus elsewhere. So for me, to find relief, the only thing I could think of where I felt any sort of relief was when I was in the bath, having a shower, and when I got into bed at the end of the day. So I started to think, okay, so how about if I've had a really rough, long day, you know, I've been at work, I've got a headache, my symptoms are playing up, I can just run myself a nice bath, I can give myself a few hours in the evening, not take my phone or a book or any sort of distraction and just sit in the bath and enjoy that moment of relief that I could have because it really was being able to just sit there and chill out and really just feel into what that relief feels like. And I'd done that as often as I needed to and it, it wasn't something that I forced, I didn't make myself do it every day, I, I'd done it when I felt like I needed it. And that is exactly what neuroplasticity is. It is cultivating those feelings that you want to feel in the moment. And it wasn't actually eliminating symptoms because I'd get up the next day, go about my daily business, and of course symptoms would return. And that's fine, it's really about just accepting that they're there and then finding moments in your day to shift into feeling more about how you want to feel. And obviously how you want to feel will be unique and true to you. That's not something that any doctor or anyone else can do for you. So how does neuroplasticity, how does neuroplasticity actually work in that sense? So if you imagine the human brain, we've got somewhere around 100 billion neurons in and around the brain and body. It makes up our, it makes up our nervous system. So every single individual neuron has thousands of different synaptic connections that deliver information from neuron to neuron. And they're carrying information from all of our five senses. They're carrying information on our beliefs, our perceptions, our opinions. They really are carrying all the, the information that make up who we are. So we'll have neural pathways within the brain that are reflecting every single subject and how we feel about ourselves. So there will be neural connections in, in the brain that are associated to your dizziness and there will be thoughts that reflect that as well. So if predominantly when you think of your dizziness, you're experiencing a lot of negative emotion, that will be reflected back into you, into your reality and how you feel. So if you start to introduce more positive emotions and how you want to feel, instead of eliminating the dizziness sensations, you're just creating stronger neural pathways. So if, for example, you choose to feel more steadiness, you can't feel steadiness and dizziness at the same time. So while you're feeling the steadiness, you're weakening the dizziness neural connections that are in your brain. So that's essentially how it works. It's never about getting rid of symptoms. It's always about focusing on how you want to feel in any given moment. So it really does become quite a holistic process. It's not just about changing something physically, it's about looking at the emotional and the mental and the spiritual aspects of yourself as well. 
So I actually discovered that I was holding some quite strong, deep, negative beliefs about my ability to heal. So it started from when my dizziness began. It was after a night out where I believe I'd had my drink spiked. A couple of days later was when the dizziness sensation started. And I went to the doctors who told me that they believed I had an ear infection, so it was labyrinthitis. And for me, it just didn't really add up with having my drink spiked and getting an ear infection. So I kind of couldn't take the diagnosis and I was worried that something more serious had happened, like I had brain damage or something else like that was going on. And I just kept chasing the doctors for more and more answers. And I had my clear MRI scan back and I was passed from, you know, doctor to doctor, from ENTs to physical therapists to neurologists. They were all telling me there was nothing wrong. All my tests were clear and that I was healthy. So my belief of thinking that there was something more serious going on, I also developed a belief of, well, if the doctors can't help me, then I'm going to be stuck with this forever. And it was a real deep rooted belief that I struggled to let go of because if the doctors couldn't help me, then who was going to? So neuroplasticity really helped me to learn that I could help myself. And you do get to the point where you think, you know, why not give it a go? Because the doctors can only do so much. And I did get to the point where I thought something does need to change. I need to try something else. So neuroplasticity did really help me to understand what beliefs I had about myself and how they were hindering my healing process because these strong beliefs can really stand in your way. So it's never really about taking a strong negative belief and flipping it into a completely positive one because that's just not realistic. So it's about chipping away at those beliefs that you have and offering something less negative. So for me, it was really about considering that maybe one day I can heal and if other people can do it, then so can I. And I just tried to have a bit more of an open minded approach to it because it wasn't serving me thinking that I was going to be stuck with this forever. So maybe you have some similar beliefs as well. And neuroplasticity, like I said, it is a really fully encompassing holistic process. It looks at all different aspects of us. So it's not just about you know, how do you feel now and how do you want to feel? That in principle is how it works, but it is more to it than that. So I would really urge that if you want to give neuroplasticity a go, if it is something that's new to you, I suggest that you go away and read some books and do your own research. What information I'm giving you today is really just scratching the surface. It's sort of an introduction to if, you, if you'd like to give it a go. So I'm living proof that neuroplasticity works and, you know, I've really had to spend a lot of time chipping away at some of the real negative beliefs I had about myself and focusing on things that I want to feel. So not focusing on symptoms, it's about focusing on the solutions and how you want to feel. So I hope that's been helpful, guys. Uh, please let me know if you're new to neuroplasticity and what you think. I'd love to know how you get on. But until next time, I'll see you soon. Bye bye.